This video is talking through how you perform or analyse uh, questions using calculations. So we've got some unit 1 calculations, unit 2 and some general calculations that could be on any paper any year at the back at the end of this presentation. First of all cardiac output which is the heart rate times by the stroke volume. So the cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped out of the heart per minute. You can, if you like a triangle, this is the triangle. So cardiac output at the top, heart rate and stroke volume at the bottom. You might need to do a two-part calculation. You might need to work out the heart rate individually. So a heart rate can be calculated by 60, because there are 60 seconds in a minute, divided by the time for one beat, so the time in seconds for one beat. So this is a question where you've got enough information just using this graph to work out the cardiac output. So first of all we're going to work out the heart rate using the formula 60 divided by the time taken for one beat. The time taken for one beat, you're usually looking for peak to peak or trough to trough, the time taken between that. And you can see on the graph here we've got two troughs. So the time between the two troughs, you can read off, read off, the time between the two is 0.9 minus 0.1, which is 0.8. So 60 divided by the time, which was 0.8 seconds, gives you an answer of 75 beats per minute. So the heart rate is 75 beats per minute. So we've got the heart rate, now we need to work out the stroke volume. Again, we can find this out from the graph. So the stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped out per beat, of the ventricle per beat. So we need the difference between the least amount of blood in the ventricle and the maximum amount of blood in the ventricle. The difference between the two will be the amount pumped out. So we've got 130 if we read off here and 60 if we read here. So the difference is 70 centimetres cubed. From the previous two calculations, we've worked out our heart rate, which is 75, and our stroke volume, which is 70. So our final cardiac output is 5,250 centimetres cubed per minute. Using a similar, very, very similar formula to cardiac output, but this time for the lungs, pulmonary ventilation, which is the volume of air breathed out per minute. Here we've got the tidal volume, and you need to times it by the ventilation rate, or breathing rate. Again, we've got a triangle, pulmonary ventilation, divided by TV, the tidal volume, times by the ventilation rate. So PV over TV times VR, if you want to use the triangle. Again, similar to how we had to calculate heart rate individually before, you might need to calculate ventilation rate, or breathing rate, by 60 divided by the time taken for one breath, because there are 60 seconds in a minute, so the time being in seconds. Instead of a graph this time I thought we'd try using a table. We've got enough information here to work out the pulmonary ventilation. So first of all we need to work out the breathing rate, the ventilation rate by 60 divided by the time taken for one breath in seconds. So we need to work out first of all the time taken for one breath and we can see the time is six seconds, difference between zero and six. Now we've not gone all the way to seven because you can see the person has stopped breathing out at this point because the volume does not change between those two. So the person has breathed out for six seconds. So it would be 60 divided by six, so that would be 10 breaths per minute. Next we need to work at the tidal volume. So the volume exhaled or inhaled per minute. So we need to the difference between the two. So this is the maximum amount of volume in the lungs, this is the minimum amount of volume in the lungs. So the difference between the two, so 6.5 minus 1.6, gives you 4.9 decimeters cubed. So now let's work out the pulmonary ventilation. We've got the tidal volume, which is 4.9. We've got the ventilation rate, or breathing rate, which was 10 breaths per minute. So our pulmonary ventilation, we times them together, so it's 49 decimeter cubed per minute. Very, very common calculation is a magnification calculation. I like to use the triangle I am. Um, you might have seen them differently. You might have seen sims or something different, or O over MN. I like I am, where I is the image size, A is the actual size, and M is the magnification. The image size is whatever you have on the screen, whether it be a picture, a photograph. A is the actual size of the cell. So the actual size is usually 
very, very, very small. And M, the magnification, is how many times bigger the image is than the actual size. Something that's really important before you do any of the calculations is to make sure that the units are the same for the image and the actual size. So make sure the units are the same above and below for the image and actual. Otherwise, if you've been asked to calculate the actual size in micrometers, it'd be best to convert your image size into micrometers first. To do this, you need to times your millimeters, your image size, by a thousand. This is perhaps the biggest source of error, not the not converting bit. So here's a past paper question. We want to find out the actual size in micrometers. We've been given the magnification of times 50,000. We've been given, we want to find out the length BC, the actual size of the length BC. So first of all, we need to find out the image size. We said it's 30 millimetres, and obviously this will differ depending on the size of your screen, whether you're using a phone or a computer or with a massive screen. So let's say that BC here is 30 millimetres. We've been asked to work out the actual size in micrometres, so first of all we've got to convert millimetres into micrometres. So 30 millimetres times by 1,000 gives you 30,000 micrometres. So we've got the right units that we want. So now we do the actual size is the image divided by magnification. That's using the triangle that we had before. So 30,000 divided by 50,000. Remember the magnification is 50,000. So 30,000 divided by 50,000 gives you 0 0.6 micrometres. Do a little error check. So that sounds about right for a bacterium. A bacterium isn't usually more than 10 micrometres long, so 0 0.6 for the width sounds about right. This question, a bit more to it. One, the main reason being that we've been given a scale bar. We've not been given the magnification, but you do need the magnification before you can actually work out the actual size. We can work out the image because we've got the pictures on here. So first of all, we need to work out what the actual increase in length would be. The, not the actual, so the image size for the increase in length. So we measure the length of this, and we measure the length of this, and the difference between would be how much this has grown extra to that. So this one is 30 millimetres, this one is 70 millimetres, so the difference is 40 millimetres. The, the bit of the fungus has grown by 40 millimetres. We want the actual size in micrometers, so we need to convert this into micrometers. Times it by a thousand, so 40,000. We've got the image size of 40,000. As I said, we need the magnification to be able to work out the actual size, but we've got nothing in the question which tells us what the magnification is. So we need to use the scale bar to do that. You can get the magnification from the scale bar. Whatever the size is on the screen, is the image size. So you use your ruler, always use your ruler to work out the image size. So the length of this scale bar is 50 millimeters. So 50,000 micrometers, because the unit here is micrometers, we need the, this length, the image length in micrometers. So the image length, we measured it to be 50 millimeters, so it's 50,000 micrometers. Now for magnification, now we've got the image, we need the actual size to be able to work out magnification. Whatever is on the scale bar is the actual length of the scale bar. So the actual length in this case is 500 micrometers. So M is I over A, so 50,000, which was our image size using the ruler, 50,000 divided by 500 gives you times 100. And magnification is times 100. So we've got everything we needed. We've got our image size, so it's grown by 40,000 micrometers. And we've got our magnification, which was 100, which we got from using the scale bar. So I over M, 40,000 divided by 100, is 400 micrometres. The actual length it's grown in micrometres was 400 micrometres. You could be asked to work out the enzyme rate of reaction using the formula the amount of product created or used up divided by the time taken. In this case, we're going to be using the mass of product divided by the time taken. And we're going to do it for the 27 degree line. I made a little bit of an error, so I tried to... Uh, so it's the 27 degree line. So this line here, the shallowest line, so for the 27 degree line. 
this is a straight line so we could have used any time along here for when it's straight so I've just used the first 20 minutes because that makes it nice and straightforward to do the calculation so the amount of product created in the first 20 seconds so let's go up from 20 seconds read across and that gives us 0 0.6 milligrams that was created in the first 20 minutes using the formula amount of products which is 0 0.6 divided by the time taken which was 20 minutes gives us 0 0.03 milligrams per minute so that is the enzyme rate of reaction for 27 degrees so we're going to we've looked at unit 1 calculations we're now going to look at some unit 2 calculations note here standard deviation you're not expected to be able to calculate for the written unit 2 exam but you are expected to be able to understand from a graph or from a table what standard deviation means. So here we've got surface area to volume ratio, often used for things like heat loss, the rate of heat loss in, in comparing that way, but you could be asked to uh, calculate it. So we've got a tiger. Let's say the surface area of the tiger is 9 metres squared and the volume of the tiger is 1.5 metres cubed. If we put this into a ratio, the surface area would be 9 and the volume would be 1.5. You don't use it, you want to try and get it to something to 1. So to do that, you divide both numbers by the smallest number. So in this case, the smallest number is 1.5. So 9 divided by 1.5 is 6, and 1.5 divided by 1.5 is 1. So that's a ratio of 6 to 1. Surface area is 6 to volume of 1. 6 to 1 you could be asked to work out the rate of transpiration using a potometer. Now, rate, again, so it's per unit time, so per minute or per second, so something divided by time. Um, in this case, it would be the volume of air, so we've got the air bubble, the volume of air lost from the leaf, per, or from the plant, per minute or per second. You could use the distance travelled by the bubble, per minute or per second, but that wouldn't be a true uh, rate of transpiration. Now, here is the equation that you need to work out the volume in a cylinder. Now, for some strange reason, the pi has moved, so the pi should be there. So it's pi times the radius squared times by 1, where r is the radius of the capillary tube, so half of the diameter of the capillary tube, and L is the distance that the bubbles move, the length that those bubbles moved in the capillary tube. So in this experiment, um, the air bubble moved 15.28 millimetres in one minute, and the radius of the capillary tube was 0 0.5 millimetres. So you need to calculate the water uptake in millimetres cubed per minute. So pi times by the uh, radius squared, which is 0 0.25, 0 0.5 times by 0 0.5 is 0 0.25, times by 15.28, which was the length that the air bubble moved, so it's 12. Um, we then need to uh, work it out per minute, so 12, made a few errors on this one, it should be divided by 1, 12 divided by 1 is 12 millimetres cubed per minute. Just make that clear again, that should not be a times, that should be a divide, because it's per minute, so 12 millimetres cubed, that's how much air was lost, divided by the time it was in one minute, so 12 divided by 1 is 12 millimetres cubed per minute. Biodiversity, here's the formula for biodiversity. It's worth learning, but in the vast majority of past paper questions I've seen, you've been given the formula. You could be expected to define what each of these letters represent, so it's worth learning those as well. Now, you're usually given a different array of species, and you've given the number of different individuals of each species. I have told my students to extend the table, use a ruler, add another column, label this column as n, little n, the number of organisms of each species. So this is there's 20 organisms of the Himalayan raspberry. So the, the, each of these numbers is a little n. So the first column, so extend the column of n times n minus 1. So n, 20, times by 19 gives 380. 15 times by n minus 1, which is 14. 15 times 14 is 210, and so on and so forth. Using the formula, you need the sum, the sum of each of these. So sum of n times little n minus 1. So 
sum in this case is 906 to 380 plus 210 plus 72 plus 90 plus 12 plus 30 plus 56 plus 56 is 906. So that is your bottom number. The sum of all that's the bottom number. So we need the top number. So top number, big N, the total number of all the organisms. So we add them all up. So 20 plus 15, etc, 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 plus 8 plus 8 gives 80. So there's 80 organisms in total. So big N is 80. So it's big N times big N minus 1. So 80 times by 79 in this case, divided by 906. So 6,320 divided by 906 gives us an answer of 6.98. So the index of diversity is 6.98. That might not mean anything in itself, but if you're going to compare it to another community, if the other community had a bigger number than this, then it would be more species diverse. If the other community had a lower number than that, then it would be less species diverse than this community. There are quite a few calculations that you could get on any paper. Unit 1, Unit 2, the Emperor, or in A2. And these are the following calculations, or things that you need to know about. First of all, the mean. You add the repeats together. Now, do not just divide that by the number of repeats. Press equals first, otherwise you'll divide the last number by the number of repeats. So add them up, press equals, divide by the number of repeats. So we've got three repeats, five, seven, and five. Add them up, press equals, that gives 17. Divide by the number of repeats, gives 5.67. For some reason the editing on this piece of software has taken the O over there. This is the ratio. You could be asked to calculate the ratio. I've only seen this a couple of times, but it has been asked before. So, let's say the mean length of a person's arm or people's arms is 0 0.3 metres. And the mean length of people's legs is 1 metre. So the ratio is 1 to 0 0.3. But again, we want it something to 1. So divide both numbers by the smaller number. So 1 divided by 0 0.3 is 3.33, 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.3 is 1. So we've got a ratio of 3.33 to 1. Percentage. So percentage is the value divided by the total times by 100. So let's say 60 students smoked out of 150 who study AS Biology. So in this case, the value, we wanted to work out the percentage of students that smoked. So the value is 60 Divided by the total number of students, which is 150, is 0 0.4, times by 100, so 40% of the students smoked. You could be asked to convert decimals to percentages. So, I think this is quite straightforward, but some people find it quite difficult. If you've got a decimal, just times it by 100, and that gives you the percentage. Or if you need to do it the other way around, if you've got a percentage and you want to create a decimal, you divide it by 100, and it gives you the decimal. Percentage change could be quite tricky, but it's quite a common calculation that you, you could be asked to do. Um, when doing percentage change, you need to, the most difficult thing is knowing what the original value is. If you're just doing a general percentage change, then read the graph from left to right, or read a table from top to bottom, with the left-hand number, the one most to the left being the original value, and the one most to the right not being the original value. Um, if you're working out percentage increase, then the lower number is the original. If you're working out percentage decrease, then the higher number is the original value. So it's difference divided by original times by 100. So we want to work out the percentage change between 1982 and 1999. So let's look at 1982. Read up from 1982, read across, gives us a value of 0 0.8. 1999. Read up from 1999, read across gives you a value of 5.8. So the difference is 5.8 minus 0 0.8, which gives you the value of 5. Divide by the original value. As I said, the original value is the one that's most to the left on the graph. So this is more to the left than this one. So this is the original value. 5 divided by 0 0.8 is 6.25. Times by 100 is 625%. Now, some people think they've gone wrong and try and do something completely different, but a number that's bigger than 100 means that you, the number has increased. You've got a percentage increase, so that is actually correct. You've got a 625% change, showing that this number is bigger than this number, because it's a bigger than 100% increase. Rate of change. 
Now this is similar to an enzyme rate of reaction or rate of transpiration. A rate of change is something divided by the time taken. So a rate is something per unit time. Rate of change, so it's the difference divided by the time taken. The time could be in seconds, minutes, or in this case, hours. So the difference in the first 10 minutes. So difference, read up from 10 minutes, read across. So we've got 10.8, it's gone from zero. So 10.8 minus zero, so the difference is 10.8, and it's in arbitrary units. So 10.8 divided by the time taken, which was 10 hours, so the difference is 1.08 arbitrary units per minute. And this time we're going to do a rate of change using a table. Perhaps a little bit more tricky. We're going to use the left ventricle and we're going to look at the rate of increase in pressure in the first 0.3 seconds. So the pressure before the ventricle contracts is 0.3. The pressure after the a ventricle is fully contracted is 15.3 kilopascals. So we want to know the rate of change, how quickly the pre pressure increases as the ventricle contracts. So the difference is the lowest, so the biggest number take away the lowest number. So 15.3 minus 0 0.3. So 15, that gives us 15 kilopascals. That's how much the pressure has increased by, divided by the time taken. So this is 0 0.3, where you've got the highest pressure and zero, a time of zero where you've got the lowest pressure. So 15 divided by 0 0.3, which is the time, which gives us 50 kilopascals per second. So the pressure is increasing at a rate of 50 kilopascals per second when the ventricle is contracting. Now you won't be asked to calculate a logarithm, but as you've seen on questions before, you might be asked to know what one is. So they're often used to plot bacterial growth curves. That's when they're mostly used. Um, but it just simply allows a large scale to fit on the same graph. So the reason you use it for bacterial cells is at the beginning, if you worked, want to know in a fermenter, for example, how many bacterial cells you've got, right at the beginning you could have a very small number, right at the, right at the earliest times. So you could have 20 bacterial cells to start off with. But after a few hours, you could have as many as 10 million or billions of different bacterial cells. Now, it would be very difficult to fit it on one graph if you used 20 at one end and 10 million at the other. You need a huge sheet of graph paper. So to create it into a logarithm, and then you can fit it on the same scale. And here's the past paper question you might have seen before. You could be asked to calculate the circumference of a circle, okay, or a sphere. So some circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. You could be asked to calculate the area, surface area, or the volume of a, rec, uh, sort of a cuboid or a cube. So here is the, the formula. Volume is the length times the width times the height, and the surface area is 2 times the width times the height plus the length times the width plus the length times the height.